Good morning and welcome Batavia Faith and Summerside. We are so glad to have you all here with us this morning. Even though we can't see you in person, we know that you're present with us and we are glad to be able to worship with you and provide worship for you. Uh, if you are worshiping with us online, we would love to know that you are here by either sharing uh, just a comment or a post or a like, or you can share your prayer requests as well. I know we already have a couple that have come through, um, and we have some from the first service as well. We will attend to those in just a moment. This morning we celebrate our veterans, and we um, will call out the name in a little bit in a couple minutes, during our children's moment-ish, uh, we will call out the names of all those who have served our country that are associated with our church, whom we love, uh, our friends and family, and, and all of those, as well as those who have gone on before us who were in military service. So that is why we've got flags all over the place. Justin's got one on the piano. We got one over here. We, we, we celebrate today our, our veterans. Uh, this week's meetings are as follows. Youth group is tonight at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Bible study is 11 a.m. on Tuesday and 6 p.m. on Tuesday. And I promise I will be there. This week is not election week, so I won't forget. Um, KFC and Faith Kids is Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. And if you'd like to be a part of any of those Bible studies or activities, we would love to have you join us. If you don't have the links or don't think you have the links, please let us know and we will share with it, those with you as well. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube after service today at Batavia Faith Summerside UMC. And the reason I say that is we've been having some issues with Facebook in terms of our posting videos, uh, including the All Saints video. We did post it last week and then discovered that it was blocked because of copyright, um, which we have, we have the rights to use the music that we use. However, there was some sort of issue with Facebook and, and the music companies and everything. So uh, YouTube allows us to still post those because we are not receiving revenue from them. We're not like trying to use ads and, and make money off of the YouTube videos. Um, but we are, are, are still trying to work out some little glitches. This is the wonderful world of technology and sometimes we have to, to do things a little differently than we've done before. So uh, if you would like to see the Saints celebration, um, and the pictures of all of the saints who have gone before us this year and the names being called out as the, the roll call of the victorious, that is available on our YouTube page, which again is Batavia Faith Summerside UMC. Um, that's our channel on YouTube. Shoebox collections, don't forget to, to bring in your shoeboxes sometime this week. They are due by next Sunday. They can be dropped off at either church, or if you are familiar with Batavia, you can drop them off at Penny's house, which is right across the street from uh, Batavia Faith, or we can arrange for pickup. We have several people who have uh, voiced uh, the ability to go and pick up um, box shoe boxes so that we can have them to take them up to the location in uh, um, Loveland to take them up there for the drop-off week, which is starting next, not this Monday, but next Monday. Judy, question? Yes, if you bring them during food pantry hours on Thursday from uh, 2.30 to 4.30 or Saturday from 10 to 11.30, thanks, I always forget that one. Yes, that's true. The earlier in the day on Thursday, we, we are here on Thursday, so if you come on Thursday, you can drive up and, and sh uh, either shoot us a text message, ring one of the doorbells, something of that sort, and we will gladly come out and collect your shoeboxes from you. So those that would be a great time to drop those off. Um, and we are still accepting donations for that as well. If you would like to give to the shoebox ministry, we have uh, some boxes are ready that have come in. There's a couple more that we have over at Batavia Faith, and I think we have a couple in the office unless we brought them down. Um, we've got, uh, we, we're still on our way to the 75. We're going to still hold out for the 75 that we had hoped for, but any shoe boxes that we do receive will be a blessing and a gift to the children that receive them. As a reminder, um, we show our faithfulness to God by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. 
And I know it's hard uh, in these times to conceive what presence looks like and what, what gifts look like and what service looks like. Um, one of the things that we can do in service this week is uh, thank a veteran. Uh, we are going to share the names today, um, and we, we've shared names at Batavia Faith as well. But thank someone who has served our country and, and reach out to them and tell them that you appreciate all that they have done for us. And that, that is an act of service um, as a person of God, as a child of God. Uh, so that's certainly a way that you can give back to our community. Also, we... Uh, we cannot continue to do church, no matter what it looks like, um, in person, online, any of those things, without your faithful giving. Uh, if we don't have gifts that come in, we can't turn on the lights. And if we can't turn on the lights, we can't be here. So we, And we can't do food pantry. We can't have our staff paid. We can't uh, do all of those things that are necessary. We can't reach out into the community. We can't pay for the ministries and the, the opportunities. So we need to remember to give of our gifts. Um, as well as give of our witness. This is a time when we need a lot of people praying for our neighbors and, and being uh, a positive influence in the lives of others. So we need to remember that we have the opportunity to reach out to other people in our communities and give of our, of our witness of sharing the love of Christ with other people in the world. And this is, there is no better time than now to do that. Um, simply just letting people know around you that you care for them, that you love them, that you're there. If, you, if they need something, that you're there to support them and care for them. That <clears throat> All of those things are ways that we can give back to God uh, a portion of what God has given to us. Uh, I also want to share this morning as we begin to share our prayer requests, the prayers of the people. Um, we have several individuals in our church family and extended family who are dealing with COVID directly. Um, we have uh, Ruth Chase, who her brother, um, her brother had been on our prayer list because he had had some heart problems. He is doing better with that, um, but was in line to get a pacemaker, and he found out that he was COVID positive. And so that is a, a really big deal for somebody who is having heart problems and is waiting for a life-altering life surgery. Uh, we just need to pray for him fervently that he does not have major complications with COVID and that he is able to get back in line to uh, receive his pacemaker and get back on track for, for wellness. So we pray for Danny um, and we uh, pray for many others in our congregation. Uh, last week we said, you know, Mike Gibson's mom, who is in her 90s, has uh, COVID as well. And we just pray for her. Uh, Rebecca Keyes shared with us earlier today that one of her friends um, has been diagnosed with COVID and was taken to the hospital. Um, so it's bad enough to be able to, to have to go to the hospital. So we just pray for them. Um, there is a pastor friend of mine who uh, I have not seen but recently, but he was diagnosed with it and now his wife has it. Um, so prayers for that, that pastor and the churches uh, involved because one church had to be shut down that they were meeting in person, but they had to be shut down because of the fact that the pastor and several other members of the church body had, um, had COVID. Uh, we just pray for all those who are dealing with this in a very, very real sense and pray for all of the, the, the classroom communities. <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> excuse me. We have uh, several school districts who have shut down at one building, uh, one grade, or many buildings in the whole school district, in some cases, right around our area that, that are facing so many cases and so many quarantines that they just can't keep up. And so all of those students and all of those teachers are having to go to remote learning. And we just pray for the remote learners. We pray for the kids. We pray for the teachers. We pray for the parents. Um, we pray especially for parents who are teachers who have to teach their classes and facilitate their children's learning all in one fell swoop. And so we just uh, pray in earnest for our community that we are able to care for one another and respect one another and make sure that we are being as safe and healthy as we possibly can. Uh, so remember, wear your masks and um, hand sanitize and wash your hands and all of those things that we're being told that we need to do. Those are steps that we can take to make sure that we are safe. Uh, Jessica, other prayer requests this morning? Um, we do have one more. I received a phone call this week from Annie, who is a friend of the Summerside Food Pantry. She, uh, we prayed for her last year about this time. She had been diagnosed with cancer, and um, she called me to say that 
She wanted to be put back on the prayer list because her cancer has returned or else she has a new cancer. We're not sure what. She's going for testing this week. She's also going to get her port put in this week. And uh, I don't have a last name, but Annie uh, needs our prayers and our love and our compassion as she is facing another very, very harsh cancer diagnosis because the first type of cancer she had was really a difficult one. And whatever this is, is either the same thing or a different, and it is, it is growing quickly. So we just pray for Annie. Uh, she has a nine-year-old daughter. So also prayers for her as well in this time. Judy, do you have other prayer requests? Um, I just remembered one. Um, Bob Swats, um, and just I just got to talk with Andy. Uh, Bob had a uh, procedure a couple weeks ago and uh, had a pacemaker put in, I believe, and is doing well and is upset that he can't um, – He's upset that he can't go golfing, but he is back home and he is doing well and he is um, excited to be uh, part of, to, to be able to get back to things as much as normal as possible. So we just are grateful that he did well through that procedure and we pray that he continues to have good healing and wellness. As we uh, reflect on these prayer requests, let us turn to God in an attitude of Holy and gracious Lord, we are grateful for all that you have given us. We are grateful for all the people in our lives, for all of those who have served our country. God, we're grateful that we live in a place where we have the freedom to be able to vote, to be able to go into the community, to be able to, to live in, in a space where we have freedoms and, and rights. God, we pray that you would be with us as we continue to navigate what that means in our world. Be with our leaders. Be with our country as we navigate this, this crazy time. Be with those uh, all around the world who are dealing with COVID in various different ways. And Lord, we also pray that you would be with um, all those we've lifted up today in name and those we've kept within our hearts and minds. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would be with us and continue to grow in us a desire to know you more each and every day. Lord, we pray all of these things in the name of your Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a second, Judy. It's okay. This morning, as we continue to share in time, uh, share in time together, uh, we will be just one second. Judy, behind you. No, behind you. There you go. Keep going. <laughs> uh, sorry, we're, we're sending messages back and forth to one another here. Um, so as we continue to be in a time of celebrating our veterans, I want to just take a moment to talk to our kids out there just for a second about vet Veterans Day and ask that everybody would uh, take a moment and thank them. Thank someone who has served our country. Ella and Joe, do you want to come up here for a second? Okay. So I challenged the kids on Wednesday for kids' church. Okay. Well, you're okay. Can you turn the, the iPad off, please? Thank you. Um, I challenged the kids on Wednesday to um, to send a note to someone who has served our country. Uh, be it somebody in their family or, or a friend or somebody else. Um, and so we're asking, it's perfectly fine. Um, okay, so as we, okay, okay, then we turn it off and we're done. There we go. That way it can't die. Yes, so here, hold this for me. Hold that and wave that. So as we are celebrating on the 11th, November 11th, um, if you would reach out to someone and send a note or a card or a picture just to say thanks for the service that they have given to our country. So as we do that, I encourage all the kids to do that and all the adults to do that as well. Okay, I, Mickey's going to celebrate with us today. And I'm going to read the name of the names of our veterans and all that they, just as we give thanks to them for all that they have done for us. Uh, Jim Baker, Travis Barker, Bill Barnes, 
Carl Bertrand, Pat Blackmon, Bill Blade, Sam Candle, Candy, sorry, George J. Capert, Tom Cooper, Bob Destaki, James Dick, Eric Holman, John Hoffman, Marvin Jones, Robert Jones, Pastor Joe, Eugene Cober, John Maloney, William Charles Merkel, Mike Merkel, Joe Morgan, Marshall Mustang, Dave Osborne, Fritz Renner, Marion Ripple, Jack Sellers, Gene Smith, Harold Walker, Joseph Walker, Hugh Walker, Hiram Bear, Chris Bear, Curtis Blimline, Mark Brown, Harry Capehart, James Cox, George Drysdale, Jerry Ferry, George Stanley Gray, Alamanzer Hart, Odie Harper, Edward Holland, Billy Hoffman, Fred Huddleston, Denver Gorman, Dallas Jones, Albert McIntosh, Winfred Mines, Harry Renner, John Walker, Frank Webb, Ernest Webb, Edward Webb, Rick Wheeler, Henry Barker is a current military personnel, Charlie Capehart, Christopher Hart, also current reserves. We thank all those who are currently and have served our country and their families as well for the sacrifices that they have given. Let us remember them today and always. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13 through 16, verse 39 chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, without us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. I want to share another prayer request that just came in that I just saw. Um, Cheryl uh, shared that it was, was it Tom Niehaus? Uh, who is in day six of being in ICU with COVID. Um, he received uh, plasma antibodies yesterday, and so we just pray for his healing and wellness today as well. This morning, as we celebrate those who have served our country, um, you can take that. Here. Ready? Jessica, my kids are stealing your soccer ball. As we celebrate those who have served our country today, um, and we remember our, that we are faithful followers, Cup is underneath the pew. Go get it. We remember that they were faithful followers. And just as last week we remembered the saints who have gone on before us, this week we remember those who have sacrificed everything for us. And uh, we celebrate our veterans who living in those both living and those in glory who have protected us and the freedoms we have as U.S. citizens. These faithful followers heard the call to serve and followed, sacrificing so much for us, even for people that they never even met. Now, I know that uh, many of those names on the list may be familiar to you, and, and many of them are familiar to me as well, but as I shared earlier at Batavia, um, if you guys sit, you're fine. Can you sit right there? Just sit right there. That's it. Um, those who were who we named off and who we called off, um, many of them we know, and, and some of them we don't. And you know what? They served. Many of them served before some of us were even alive, and yet they still served for us, and they sacrificed for us. And that is an amazing act of love and compassion for one's country, one's country, and for people that you don't even know. And so we remember those people today, and, and we remember that they heard the call to serve and followed. They followed in the footsteps of so many who have gone on before, who put others before themselves, following God's call in faith, no matter what the cost. In Hebrews 11, which is the scripture passage that we have read today, and I'm going to add a little bit more to it and some of the things that happened before it. Uh, Joe, you have to sit. Uh, some of the things that happened before what Judy read for us today. Verses 1 through 3 is actually a definition of faith. Go. Is a definition of faith. Uh, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. Hold on just a second there. Let's think about this. Things that are seen were made by something that is not seen. That's amazing, right? Things that are seen were made by something that's not seen. I don't know about you, but that when I, when I read that, even when I read that again this morning, I, I thought about what that means. That everything material was made by something that is immaterial. Everything that, that is mortal was made by something immortal. Everything that is here that we can tangibly touch was made by something intangible. It was made by God. And that is just miraculous and amazing. And the fact that we believe that is faith. That we believe and we have assurance of something that we've never seen before. Something we've never touched. Something that we've never heard. Something we've never felt. Per se. To have faith means that we are confident in the things that we cannot prove by earthly means. Things that are not physically sensible and tangible. Things maybe we can't even imagine. I don't know about you, but I can't even imagine the glory of heaven. I have no idea what it's like. We get little pieces and snippets and pictures in scripture, but we have no idea what eternal glory looks like. We have no idea what eternal glory feels like. We can only get a, a little glimpse of it here on earth. The kingdom of heaven on earth. We can only see a piece of it. 
And, and when we think about all of that, we think about all of the people who have gone before us who have set us up to be where we are today. The people who have had great faith and took leaps of faith, regardless of what they felt, regardless of what they, they thought, regardless of what they did. And they took a leap of faith and a jump into something unknown, a jump into something amazing, a jump into following and sacrificing for God. That's what our veterans have done. Abel was a man of faith way, way, way back in the beginning of Genesis. He offered sacrifices to God out of his faithfulness. Noah, another Old Testament name, built an ark when everybody else thought he was crazy. Abraham offered his son as a sacrifice when it was the only thing he had. Moses sought the promised land knowing that he would never actually get to see it. All of these men followed God's promises, even when they couldn't see the end result. Some of them even died before they could achieve their promised goals. They had faith that moved mountains. They had faith that moved nations. They had faith abundantly in amazing and miraculous ways. They had faith that, that there was something beyond the current circumstances. They had faith that there was something beyond the horizon. They had faith in the one who created them. As we turn to our scripture that Judy read for us this morning, we see what it meant for these faithful followers to sacrifice. In Hebrews 11, 13, and 14, it says this, All of these died in faith without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a home. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on this earth. They knew something better was ahead. They knew that we are not home yet. They knew that there was something bigger and grander, even though they couldn't see it. They had faith, even though they didn't get to see the end game. They had faith, and they followed God no matter what. They sacrificed the familiar. They sacrifice the things they love. They sacrifice the comforts in order to follow God's call. What would that look like? That's amazing, an amazing con concept to sacrifice all that is the, of the self for all that is of God. They focused on God first and foremost and put their own needs and desires on the back burner. I guarantee that Moses really didn't want to trek for years and years and years and years and years and years and years through deserts and forests and glades and over mountains and through waters. And I'm sure he didn't want to do that. I'm sure that wasn't comfortable, setting up camp and taking it down and setting up camp and taking it down. I'm sure it wasn't comfortable when Noah was sitting there building the ark and everybody was laughing at him. I'm sure it wasn't comfortable Abraham to take his son up the mountain as a sacrifice. It wasn't something that he thought he'd ever do. It wasn't something that any of them ever thought of themselves, but they, call, they were called by God and they did it anyways because they had faith that God would provide. They had faith that God would provide the next steps. They had faith that God would go into the next space. And let them in. They had faith that God would open the door. They had faith. They had faith. These faithful followers not only sought the things of this earth, but the promise of heaven. As we already said, they were seeking a homeland. They felt as they were, though they were strangers on this earth. In Hebrews 15 and 16, or 11 and 15 and 16, and then again in 39 and 40, it says this, If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. Let's pause there for a second. If they had been thinking about the land they left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. 
But instead they thought forward. They thought of what was coming next. They thought of what they didn't even see. As Moses traveled through the fields and deserts and waters and everything, he kept thinking about the promised land that God had set out for him. He kept thinking about what was going to come next. He didn't turn around and look in the rearview mirror, as so often we do. Looking in the rearview mirror to see what is comfortable, what has been, what we know, what we can confirm and tangibly understand. Looking in the rearview mirror at what is comfortable, what is familiar, what has always been. When sometimes God is calling us out of that. Out of what is comfortable, out of what we can confirm, out of what we can understand, and into something so crazy and amazing that we don't even understand it yet. That we don't even know it yet, but if we have faith, we can follow in Christ's footsteps in that direction. If we have faith, we can know that God will provide. They didn't look back to what they had left behind what they mourned for, what they grieved for, but they looked forward to what was promised to them. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Don't we desire that too? A heavenly home? What comes next? Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what is promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not without us be made perfect. As we said already, all of these men in Hebrews 11, and I encourage you to go back and read Hebrews 11 in its entirety because it's pretty fascinating, pretty amazing, the stories and the recaps of the stories from the Old Testament that it has. But as, as we, we know of these men they didn't get to see everything. And you know what else? Those who serve our country don't get to see everything. They don't necessarily get to see the fruit of their labors. They don't get to see the people they help all the time. They don't get to see the families that are encouraged by them. They don't get to see what they're really doing in fighting for our country. And just the same, when we go out and we plant the seeds of faith and we share our witness, we share our story of how Christ has impacted our lives, we don't always get to see the outcome. We don't always get to see the fruit. We don't always get to see what comes next. We don't get to see who we impact always. Sometimes we do, and that's great. It's wonderful when we get to see the impact of our, of our actions and of our faithfulness, but sometimes we don't get to see And yet we still know that we have to set aside our desires of the familiar and what we have had before in favor of the adventure of following God's call and seeking what could be. Of following where God leads us, following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, making disciples and going into all the world. If we are faithful followers, we are able to do what all those who serve our country have done. Set aside the self for the greater good. Set aside the self for what is God's plan and what is God's glory. Our desire, their desire to follow God led them to the promise of heaven. These people who are faithful, so much better than anything we could ever experience on earth, better than anything we could ever imagine. Now here's where we make a pivot point in the message today. When we think about those who have gone on before us, those who have achieved the reality of heaven, those who are faithful followers, and those who have sacrificed it all for family and country, we recognize that they have all been pointing us towards the promises of Christ. This is where we come into Hebrews chapter 12, just the very beginning. We don't even get really far into Hebrews 12. But just the very beginning, the first, first three verses says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let's also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, 
who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Now that's just verses 1 and 2, but we're going to stop there for a second and talk about that. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. People who have gone before us, people who we have, who have given us steps to step up on, people who we rely on, we rest on their shoulders. There's all sorts of uh, phrases that we can say here, but we, we rely on the work that they've done, and we build upon the work that they have done to continue to do the work of Jesus Christ in this world. But we have to take the step of we have to take the leap of faith off the edge in order to do it. We have to lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. The things that hold us back, the things that keep us where we are, the things that keep us doing what we've always done. We need to set those things aside. And also set aside the sin that clings so closely, the sin that is focusing on us instead of focusing on the one who created us. The sin that is focusing on this world rather than the next. The sin that is thinking about what's in it for me versus what's in it for God. If we can do that, then we can run with perseverance the race set before. The race to the finish line, the race to heaven, the race to go and make disciples. Jesus did that. And Jesus is our example. These other saints who have gone before us, the veterans who have served our country, all of them, they have done this. They've set aside all the things of this world for us. In verse 3 it says this, consider him, we're talking about Jesus, who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Jesus dealt with the worst types of hostility and opposition of anyone. And yet he endured so that we might have the opportunity to go and continue his message. So that we might have the opportunity to go into the world and grow the kingdom of God. So that we might have the opportunity for a future and a home in heaven. Jesus endured the hostility so that we could not grow weary or lose heart. I know that as we stand here and we are separated by the airwaves, it's easy to grow weary and lose heart. I've grown weary. Justin, have you grown weary? Yeah, this isn't fun. Jessica, we're weary. All of us, all of you, we are weary and we are losing heart. That maybe we're not doing the right things or maybe we're not doing this, maybe we're not doing that, maybe something's wrong, maybe who knows what. But it says, don't go grow weary and lose heart. To run the race with perseverance, knowing that Christ is with us. When we follow the path that God has laid for us, it's not easy. It looks sometimes like preaching to an empty room. It looks sometimes like having kids so excited to see your kids because they haven't seen them in six months. That they couldn't stop giggling and laughing. Fully masked, socially distanced, all of those things. It looks like setting aside the things that we've always clung to and doing something different. It looks like learning how to learning everything from copyright law in order to post worship. It looks like all of those things. It looks like something different. It looks like something new. It looks like something scary. But you know what? Jesus died so we might persevere. Jesus died so that we might continue to do it because it's what we are called to do in this place. Jesus died so that we could be assured of a 
future in heaven so that we could have faith knowing that he set and laid out a road and a path for us. Knowing that we have a home that is not here in this world. I'm diverting today. So if you're listening and you were listening to the last message, it's different at the end. So if, you're, if, you, if you think that we're going to end the same place we did last time, as in this morning, as in a couple hours ago, we're not. Um, there's, a, there's a Stephen Curtis Chapman song that says, that's called Not Home Yet. And it almost always makes me cry. Because he talks about the fact that we're not home yet. We still have to get there. We still have to go. And home being heaven. We are not home yet. We cannot simply just kick back and relax and say, eh, well, we've done as much as we could. We have to keep running the race. We have to keep fighting for God. We have to keep pushing others and encouraging others and bringing people into discipleship. We have to keep pushing ourselves. We have to keep learning and growing ourselves so that we might be better disciples in order to make more disciples. A friend of mine says, you got to be a disciple to make one. It's very true. We have to continue to persevere in our race, even when we can't be in person. Even when we can't do the things we've always thought we could do. Even when we can't act in the same way we've always acted. Even when we're faced with challenges of something different. We have to have the faith that God is in it. We are called amongst the witnesses. If we're able to stand in our faith, then someday we will be called as a part of that cloud. As a part of the heavenly host. As a part of faithful followers but we have to stand we have to stand together we have to stand for Christ and we have to sacrifice that's, that's what every single one of these great leaders, every single one of our veterans, every single person who has gone before and is considered amongst that cloud of witnesses they've all made a sacrifice some of them small some of them large, some of them made many sacrifices. But we have to give up something in order to get to a place where we are truly doing what God has called us to do because God has not called us to be comfortable. God has called us to be disciple makers. God has called us to go into all the world, make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that Christ has commanded and remember that God is with us always. No matter how much we feel like God has left, no matter how much we feel like we're yearning for something, no matter what, God is with us always, even to the end. 